What's up guys, Dan here with Bitter Tech, and today what I've got behind me is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro running iPad OS 15 just released. I'm gonna be taking you through 44 new features about iPad OS 15 in this hands-on review. So let's not waste time, let's just get into it. So tip number one, widgets can now be placed on the home screen. As you can see right here on this home screen, if I press and hold, you can now move these around anywhere just like you could on iOS in iOS 14. Number two, slide over widgets are still there, but they don't slide into the home screen and pin there like they did before. They just live within this row where you can edit and add as many as you want. Number three, widgets now have a larger format, which you can see here with the Apple TV grid which spans four by two to take advantage of the iPad's larger display. You can see here that Photos has the exact same larger feature. Number four, App Library is now present which you can see if you slide all the way over just like you did on iOS all the way to the end of your home screens. As well, it's in the dock right here so you can just click and you can see that those animations are actually really fun. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Number five, your app icons can now be hidden now that we have the app library. So you can just press and hold on things that you don't use very often, remove app, and then remove from home screen, and that'll hide it. Number six, pages can now also be hidden or rearranged. If you click down here, you can see now we can move these around wherever it makes sense. You can also check to remove them from the view. Number seven is the brand new multitasking menu. So if I open files, for example, you can see at the top, we have this navigation that it snaps into. If I click onto it, we have the option of full screen, side view, or split view here. If I press on the split view, it pulls it over, and then I can open another app for it to pull side by side. Another way to go about this is if you have an app open in full screen and you just drag it down, it'll do the exact same effect where it pins it off to the side, and then you're able to open the app again, and it'll do the same thing, opening it in split view. Number eight, if you're in the app switcher here, you can actually pin things side by side, and you can see that you can just drag them and put them into new configurations right here. It's very easy to do, much easier than it used to be. I think this is gonna to lead to a lot more people using multitasking that weren't before. Now, once you do have things in split view, you can see that you can press on something and open it in a new window, which will open a center window. So you can swipe down to minimize them. And then this brings us to tip number 10, which is the minimize shelf, where you can see all of your minimized tabs. You can just click to open them. They'll open back in that center shelf. Number 11, there's brand new features brought to Do Not Disturb this year with an emphasis on delivering content where it makes the most sense. You can see here, not only do we have Do Not Disturb, but we have different versions called Personal, Sleep, and you can even add in custom options, which you can see here. These custom focus options allow you to limit the people that you want to receive notifications from while you're on Do Not Disturb, or the apps that you allow to receive notifications from during that time. You're also able to do things like customize which home screens are actually turned on, which you can see by hitting home screen, custom pages, turn that on, and then you can choose to only show one or two options. These focus modes can have a smart activation based on suggestions, or you can set them based on your own preferences like time, location, or specific apps. Now, if you are on do not disturb mode and you go into your messages, you can see here that it's gonna alert the person that tries to message you that you're currently on Do Not Disturb. Next up, we have notifications. So you can see here, they're completely redesigned. They have a new icon. They're bigger and they're bolder than they were before, which makes them a lot easier to click through. And in my opinion, that actually looks really good.
Next up, we have some keyboard improvements. So anytime that you're in an app, if you hold down the command button on your external keyboard, you're gonna see a new menu that tells you all of the brand new keyboard shortcuts that you can go through. Next, we've got tab through navigation. So you no longer need a mouse or a trackpad. You can just use your keyboard to cycle through things. So here I'm just using my keyboard to hit the arrows and cycle through things. Next, we've got what Apple's calling Quick Note. You're able to quickly from any app pull open a note section just by going from the bottom right corner and swiping up. As you can see here, that's not exactly working. It seems like the only way that it's working right now is if you use an Apple Pencil and then swipe in from the corner. So naturally to use this feature, you're gonna to need to buy an Apple Pencil or hopefully they actually are going to allow you to use your finger on the corner of the display in order to bring open a Quick Note in the future. So next up we have changes in the Notes app. So I'm just gonna see by clicking here, you can see in a note, we have a couple of things happening. First off, we have the option to use a hashtag. And once we make that hashtag, it's gonna link it. Now you can see if I open this up, we have a new tag section here where things can be organized based on the tags that appear in the notes. Going back to this note, you can see a couple of other things. Next, you have the option to mention people and it'll notify them that you mentioned them and bring them into the note. And last, any changes that you make to a note that you're collaborating on, now get tracked in an activity log where you can see everything that's been changed recently. So this brings a lot of new collaboration features to the Notes app, which I think people are really gonna find handy if it's something that you're using on a regular basis. Next, we have Safari changes. So first up, the biggest change is to the navigation within an app. So you can see if I pull open the top here, we have a brand new navigation that just unfolds, shows you the URL within the navigation bar at the top here, and that's gonna expand as you click on each tab that's just floating in the top here. Next is that the tab bar actually changes color based on the website that you're on. So you can see as an example, iMore changes to that yellow, which is exactly the same as the iMore color. Another example of that would be the Nintendo Life website, where I click on this, it's gonna go the same shade of red that Nintendo Life is. I think this leads to a very seamless look where it just blends in very well, almost making it invisible where it used to stand out before. Next, we've got tab groups. So you can see if you hit on the left here, hit the plus, now you have the option to create a new tab group from the tabs that are open. What this is gonna do is first you can name it. Then if you click on this tab, you're gonna see all of your tabs automatically open for you. So it's essentially a new way to open a bunch of bookmarks at once. If they're frequent websites that you visit all at once, this is gonna be a really handy way to just one click and load all of your tabs all at once. Next up, we have that extensions are gonna be coming to iPadOS very shortly for Safari. They've already been on Mac for years and they're finally being brought over to the iPadOS and the iOS systems this fall at launch. Unfortunately, they're not available for this beta to show. Next, we've got FaceTime changes. So you can see if I open FaceTime here, we have a new option to create a link. So this is gonna be very much like how you would create a new meeting with Zoom. Just by clicking that, you're gonna automatically create a new meeting that you can set a custom name to, or you can just send a link. I'm gonna airdrop this to myself, and then I'm gonna start the meeting just by closing out of this and hitting the link. This is gonna open it right away. I'm gonna hit join. And right away, you can see this brand new navigation where you have the option to chat, change your speaker so that you can airplay to whatever device is around you, mute yourself, turn off your video, and the option to share your screen. Unfortunately, share your screen isn't an option that we can show right now in the beta, but eventually you'll be able to not only share the screen of your device, but you're also gonna be able to airplay any music or any video so that you can watch or listen together with others who are on FaceTime. When somebody joins the meeting, you're gonna be alerted, which you can see in the bottom corner here, and I can just hit accept. Now looking at this video, you can see that nothing is blurred here, but if I hit the portrait mode, now we've got portrait mode 
in video on FaceTime. So it's gonna blur out that background and make it look a lot sharper than it did before. This is a cool feature that I think a lot of people are gonna use. And every time I make a call, it is on automatically by default. So I wonder if that's something that everyone's just gonna be using by default. And that's a look at redesigned FaceTime changes. So next we have changes to maps. So first off, you're gonna see an interactive globe view where you can actually cycle around the globe and explore new places. This works really nicely and you can see highlights of new places. Next up, we have more details added to maps than ever before. So if I zoom in here in San Francisco and keep zooming, now you can see brand new details like crosswalks that are showing up. If I zoom in further, you can see the medians. You can even see all of the painted on lettering saying no left turns, all of the arrows on the street, all of the bike lanes, just a crazy amount of details, even with all of the shrubs. This is only working in select cities at the beginning, but a slow rollout across the world is happening. And this is gonna make it a lot easier for people to navigate in unfamiliar areas. Next, we've got night mode. So if I change to dark mode here, you're gonna see that this all changes as well. If I change to 3D mode here, you can see we've now got this brand new glow on buildings, which is a really nice touch on Apple's part. Another thing that we can't show on here is AR directions, but as it rolls out more, I'll be showing more on that. So be sure to hit subscribe to see demos of that on the channel. So next we have live text. So you can see in this photo, as I move my cursor, I'm actually able to copy this as text. And if I click on it, I can look it up. But what's great is I can actually translate things if they're in another language, and it's gonna show me all of the translations live. And this is gonna happen through photos. This is also gonna work through the camera app as you're holding your camera up to things that need translation. It's also gonna work as an index for all of your photos. So if I search for 12 beta in photos, you're gonna see that photo pop up because it's reading it in the text of the photo. So this is gonna make it way easier to search through your photos as it identifies what's actually in them. And it's also gonna be able to do that for objects as well. So it's gonna analyze what's in the photo. And just by searching, you're gonna be able to find exactly what you're looking for. So by searching for car, it's gonna show me all of the cars. Will it work for Apple products? No, or at least not yet. Another new feature is memories. So if I click on a memory, it's gonna show me different memories and they're gonna to sync to the actual music. And if I tap on this, I'm able to change the music mix to something else. And when I change it, not only does the music change, but the filters change with it to reflect the type of music. All around, this is a really cool way to explore all of your past photos in a way that's completely automated. Next up, we've got new wallpapers. So heading on over to wallpaper here and hit choose new wallpaper. You can see a brand new light and dark mode for this new wallpaper here. And then we'll try it again in light mode. And you can see it changes there. Everything else appears exactly the same in the wallpapers. Another one that I wanted to show in this case was universal control where you can move your mouse from one Apple product to another almost like they're connected. So you really just need one keyboard and one mouse or trackpad for all of your devices. And while this seems like a cool feature, it's not available on beta one yet, but as soon as it is, I'll have a video covering that feature. Other features include the ability to open iPhone apps in landscape mode on iPad, so they no longer force themselves in portrait mode, which is really great to see. Another new feature is that calendar links are embedded in apps now, so you're able to just hit join with the click of a button. Now, if you send multiple photos, you're gonna see them in this cluster. If we go into the settings app and then go into privacy, we can now see recent app activity. And we also get privacy reports on all of our apps, which give us more details into when apps are using specific features of our phone. 
In mail, we have new privacy protection where we're able to hide our IP so that senders can't track when we've opened emails. And finally, Siri now takes requests offline and renders them on the device, making them a lot faster to be used, which was shown off in the keynote and worked really quickly. All right, guys, so that was a hands-on with 44 new features on iPadOS 15. If there's something I missed, leave it down in the comments below because I'm going to be making a bunch more videos like this between now and the fall when it releases to the general public. And if there's anything you want more clarity on, leave a comment down below as well for that. While you're down there, remember to hit the like button because it tells YouTube that videos like this don't suck. As well, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this from me between now and the fall. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.